Welcome everyone to this week's midweek message. We have been talking from the series, Hear It, See It, Do It, The Process of Faith. Today we're going to talk on this last one, Do It. Let's get into the Word of God. You have your Bible, your phone, your tablet. Go on and grab it and we're going to take our time and continue in through this series and wrap it up on doing it. We've been coming from the base scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So let's zero in on that scripture passage, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So as we said last week in seeing it, being able to see it with spiritual eyes and not with our natural eyes. So our walk has to be a spiritual walk and not just a natural or a carnal walk. To be carnal minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if we are looking for a life and peace, then we have to be spiritually minded. And now that we hear the word and we see the word, now it's time to do the word. So when we look at um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, it says, for we walk. So now let's zero in on that walk by faith. And I want to go to Genesis 3 and 8 to look at this out in the scripture because we can see all through the scripture passage down the generations how those that came before us walked with God and even in the beginning in the garden in the cool of the day the scripture says and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day I mean have you ever late in the evening time going for a walk and your time to meditate or if you're walking with someone uh, just a time to conversate and to just to just fellowship with one another in the process of walking in the scripture passage is saying that God walked with them in the cool of the day what was walking with them we know physically the scripture is not saying of God having feet but to give you a symbol or to give you an illustration of him walking alongside us, it was the voice of the Lord God walking with them in the cool of the day. It's like God saying, let's take a walk so I can commune with you, so I can talk with you, so I can give you my word and as you follow you can go through your life as you walk with God's word the word walks with you through your life we can see this through Adam as the scripture is talking in Genesis 3 and 8 and then it also says Enoch in in Genesis 5 and 24 Enoch walked with God and then Hebrews it comes and says he was translated before and not seeing death and it says that he pleased God so we see that faith without faith is impossible to please God and now we see the link between our walking by faith or walking with God has to be pleasing with God so now we also see that Noah walked with God it says in Genesis the sixth chapter and the ninth verse it says these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God. So what does it mean here that Noah was just? It meaning that he walked with God or he did the word of God. When we do the word, that is of us showing that we are walking by the word. So do we live by the word to live by the word and not just to go on Sundays and Wednesdays and just hear a message preached but are we taking that message that has been preached and now applying it to our lives so we are gonna get into faith without works is dead to to bring this scripture passage out but what does it mean to walk with God to hear his words and to do his word. We also see Abraham in Genesis 17 and 1, uh, Genesis 12, 1 through 5. Abraham walked with God. He left 
his father's house and his, his country and his kindred to go to a place that God would show him. And in Hebrews 11 and 8 it says, and he left that place not knowing where he was going. So now we see Abraham as the father of faith giving us the pattern or the example of what it looks like to walk by faith. So remember, in the series that we're speaking of, this is a process. We're taking us through the process of faith. The faith comes by hearing, which 11 uh, Romans 10, 17 gives us that foundation. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then now when we hear that word, it got to get on the inside of our heart. And then we got to see the picture. So you have to see the promise with spiritual eyes. And then you take off from that visualization of the word. So we we know that we the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. So you have to see it eternally before you can walk it out physically. So when he saw the promise that God gave to him that he would have a son, that he would be the father of many nations, he left where he was on that promise. He left with the hope that God would fill him and with that promise of making him the father of many nations. So he didn't leave out just on nothing. He left on the promise. And the promise was enough for him to walk it out. Because he knew that God had shown himself faithful. When, when, when we go through all the previous scripture passages. And see all those that walk with God. We can see the the the. The illustration of this in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, in that hall of faith, that each person walked with God. God showed himself faithful in their lives. But he gives us his word, then we have to now mix that word with faith and walk it out. We can't just activate the word and not do the word. So, how would this look out in the scripture? You got a credit card coming in the mail, you got a you got a credit amount on it. And then now before you can use the card, you have to activate the card. So we have gotten that point right. We have gotten that point correctly. We have gotten the card in the mail. We have understanding that we have the word. We have the, the card. We have the, uh, 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 the promise on that card or the use of the credit on that card. We've dialed the number on the card or we've gone to the website and we've clicked on activate the card. Now the card is live. You have active word. You have ready word. You have word that's ready to go to work on your behalf. But not having a job to do or not being taken to a store, then that card is still yet useless. Oh man, I've activated my faith. But I've never applied the faith that I've activated. I've activated my faith. I've called the number. I've activated it. I've put the word in my mouth and the word in my heart. But now the word has to get to our feet. We have to do the word. We have to walk in the cool of the day with God. And not hide ourselves from God, but walk with him. So watch this. In Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. Go with me there. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. And look to what it says is our whole purpose on the earth. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. It says this. Let us hear. The conclusion of the whole matter. What is all of this about? What is our walk about? What are we here for? Why are we here? What is our duty? What is our purpose? And he gives us an example of it in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. To fear, to reverence, to respect. 
to be in awe of God in his word and to keep that word, to keep this commandments. That's our whole duty. What am I? What is my walk to be in my life? To do the word of God, to live the word of God, not to just activate it, but it has to be mixed with faith and being mixed with faith. You have to mix it with complete faith. You can't just mix it with the part of believing. You have to mix it with the part of believing and doing. James, the first chapter or the second chapter, uh, verse, uh, first chapter says, Be ye, don't just be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. Because doing is bringing the hearing to completion to complete the faith. Maybe we have been living an incomplete faith, not finishing the process of faith, but coming to a place where we believe it and we receive it. I, I believe in the story of the parable with the with the sword that the, the, the seed comes and is sown into the heart and the person get excited about it and they believe it and they understand it. But then the cares of the world come and then that which they believe they go away from. Why? Because it hadn't taken root in their heart. So w w w the reason it may have not taken root is because of the non uh, not applying the word. So the word has to be applied in our everyday life. So we see this out even from this time of pandemic and this, this time of economic um, situations going on where now hard times have come and all of these things have happened through the year and now we're it takes the blinders off and we see where we're at in our faith to realize that our faith wasn't as strong as we thought it would have been when the trial came because we are we were activating our faith but not doing what we're activating so now you you we we come on Sundays and we come on Wednesdays but are you applying the word to your life so as we begin to slow down and and learn the word and and, and and teach the word but it can't stop there we have to get to the place where we're living the word living the word is doing the word Look at Deuteronomy 10th chapter in the 12th verse. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. And watch what it says there. And the purpose of man in doing the word. Deuteronomy 10th chapter in the 12th verse. It says, and now Israel. He's speaking to Israel coming out of Egypt and going into the wilderness to go to the promised land. And you got the training ground. You have that process of faith that God is developing in them. And look what he says to them in verse 12. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require or request of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. How many of his ways? All his ways. We, we get hung up in that area as well. Because we want to walk in the ways of God that's beneficial to us. But we don't want to walk in the ways of God that we are not in agreement with or that are uncomfortable to us. So it's easy to do the part of God's word and the part of God's will that's easy, that's, that's, that's doable. Yeah, I can do this one. But when it comes to this one, it's hard for me to do. It's, it's hard for me to grasp. It's hard for me to build on. But he didn't say you can do some of his word. He said we have to do all of his word. And this is a growing process. It's not a one-time thing. We're ever growing. We're ever learning. We're ever increasing in our faith and in our walk with him. But we, what we don't want to do is come to a place where things get difficult and we walk away from God. Instead of walking with God, we walk from the Father and instead of walking with the Father. But he says to walk in all of his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul. What, what, what is he requiring of us? What is he expecting of us? 
He wants us to complete the process. He wants us to hear the word. He wants us to see the word. And now he wants us to do the word. In doing so, it shows in our heart that we have heard him and that we know him. And now we show out his word in our lives. How do we communicate with our with our spouse or with our uh, relatives or with our uh, church family or with our co-workers, with all of those that we're in relationship with? How do we show them that we're walking with God? You know, a, a person can say a lot with their mouth. They can say a lot with their talk. But the talk has to be backed up with the feet. The talk has to be backed up with the actions. What actions? Look, don't, don't, I, I, I'm, I'm, those around me know me. I, I'm, you can talk a good game, but I want to see you walk it out. I, I want to come and follow you and see if you're walking out the word. Not, say, not that you're doing the word perfectly, but are you doing what you said that you're going to do? Are you walking it out? And that, I believe, sometimes is an issue that we have in the body of Christ. Is that we have, it's easy to come and, 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 and play the part, but then we have to do the part. And not just, not just in the four walls, but I'm talking about doing it in your course of life. It's easy to say, I, I'm going to believe him and I'm going to trust him until it comes down to the time where it's time to trust him. And then now we lose our, our mind and we lose everything that we've learned when it comes time to do the word. Is the word settled in your heart? So we have to complete the process. When we get to that point where we lose everything because it's time to do it, then we're, we're going through the situation not completing our faith. And what we have to be aware of and what we have to look in our lives and see what areas are am I incomplete in my faith? Where I, I've kind of got it on the inside, I'm seeing it, I can get the picture of it, I'm looking through the lens of possibility, but I'm not putting the action to that. I'm not leaving my country and from my father's house and going to a place that he would show me because I need him to show me first. Well, God doesn't always operate that way. He wants you to believe him and trust him. So he wants you to walk it out and know that he is with you. If God is for you, who can be against you? What can be against you? Nothing shall separate him from separate you from the love of God. Nothing, no principality, no power, no, 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 no thing, tribulation, no persecution, nothing. So if that is the case, then I have the Father with me to walk this out. So now here we come to the to the the, the, the difficult part, I guess, in in walking it out. Is that in the walking it out, oh, uh, God is going to test to see if you believe what has been said. He's going to test to see if you believe what has been spoken. So we know that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. God manufactured us. We 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 talk suddenly from the the the, the illustration of the potter and, and the father being the potter and coming to the, the pottery and he molds and shapes and forms it in the way that he would. And he even told Jeremiah that before I formed you, I knew you. So he had a plan and a purpose. As Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not evil to give you an expected end. Peace. He's, he is to a life to you. Those things that he had made available for you, he planned them for you. And then now he puts you to the test. To see what is going to come out of what he manufactured. So if we've been handmade by God. If our life has been tailor made. And I know we may have gone down roads. We may have may have did some destructive things. But because of Adam's sin and the corruption that is in the world. But God said I will do a new thing. We are created new in him. So now our righteousness that we walk in now is not our own righteousness in anything that we can do, but it is the righteousness
righteousness of God, which is by faith. Me believing that Jesus walked it out for me makes me righteous because I believe what he done for me and not what I have done for myself. So now I am walking it out based on what Christ done. So now I crucify that old man that's corrupt. That's the marred clay. That clay has been marred by corruption. So now I'm not getting a new set of clay. I'm just reshaping me in the image of Christ so God can reveal his son in me so now I see how I can bear the fruit of the spirit because of the spirit of God that's in me I'm not going outside to see where God is he is on the inside of me I don't have to go ascend down to bring him up or ascend up to bring him down the word is nigh you even in your mouth the word of faith which we preach so if I have in me a well of living water that's flowing freely through me it is through my understanding that I have to tap to draw it out but God is simply saying in doing it in the process now he has to prove it so let me prove this thing so how, how, how let's give an illustration of that in in the uh, automobile manufacturer when they're producing the product they have a finished product that's ready so now it's time to put that product through a series of testing to see if it's ready for mass production but before we can put this out to the public I have to test it to see if the quality is there for which we built it for. So now as it goes through a series of crash tests, of speed tests, of, of all these different areas to test that product, the manufacturer is wanting to see if he can prove it. No different than us and our walk in faith. That God wants to see if we heard it and we, he wants to see if we can see it, if we know it to be true on the inside. And now he wants us to do it. But to do it, he has to put us through a test or through testing. He's wanting to test your walk. Oh man, go with me to James, the second chapter. In the 18th verse, James 2 and 18. And we're going to wrap this up with this. So I said, uh, man, a statement of faith alone can't save us. Um, that, that seems, oh man, you're going to have to explain that to me. In James, the second chapter in the 14 verse, it says, what profit, what does it profit, my brother, though a man say he have faith? And have not action works. The action, I would rather say action there, the doing part of it. Can faith save him? Can faith alone save him? Watch what it says. If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what profit? So if we say, just pray and say, God, I pray that you would give that person food who is in need of food, but not give them the bread or the drink that they need, then what profit it is to them? So he's saying in the same place, faith without the action is dead. Having an activated card without swiping that card after you have gotten some products to purchase it's null and void. It's vain. You have an activated card that you're not using. <laughs> you got activated faith that you're not using. You got activated faith that you're not using. I don't want to go in that area because I it's, 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 it's unknown in that area. So I don't want to go in that area. I don't I don't, I don't want to deal with that situation because I don't know the outcome of that situation. So now you have faith on the inside that's active. But it's inactive because there's no action along with it. So this is what the scripture is saying. Even, uh, look at verse 17. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Faith alone can't save. It's the faith and the action. Believing it and then coming forth in what you believe. 
Look at verse 18. This is what I want to get to. If a man says, thou hast faith, and another person says, I have works. Then it says, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Show me your faith. Show me your faith by your action. Abraham, show me your faith. Leave your country and your father's house and go to a place that I will show you. Show me your faith, Abraham. Take your son Isaac up on the mountain and as a sacrifice. Show me your faith, David. Grab the stones and go after Goliath. Show me your faith, uh, Daniel. Show me your faith, Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego. Show me your faith by your actions. And faith has to be tested. You show the faith by the test. Look at verse 19. Thou believe that there is one God. Thou does well. Believes, or the devils with an S, also believes and trembles. But will thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead, or will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Question mark. Was not Abraham our father justified by his actions? And by his actions was made perfect. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, verse 20. Uh, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? When he had offered his son Isaac upon the altar. God gives him the promise, promise of a seed of a child and then now God says take that child up to the mountain and crucify the child that I gave you. Your only begotten son crucify him and then Abraham goes up to the mountain to do so as he was spoken and we know the story the angel stops him and then he says now I know that is in your heart to serve the Lord. He wanted to see by testing. He tempted him by asking him to do this to Isaac. So verse 22 says, See thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect or made complete. The process of faith is complete when you have heard, when you have saw, and when you have done, you build the foundation of your faith by those things. Let's look at Luke 6 and 46 to show it in the story. Luke 6 and 46. It says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why call me Lord, Lord? When you don't do the things which I say. Whosoever cometh to me. And hear my sayings. And do them. I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house. And dig deep. And laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose. And the stream been, uh, beat venomously upon the house. And could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock. But he that hear it and do it not is like a man who built his house upon the sand upon the earth and when the streams beat venomously upon it it fell and the ruin of that great of that house was great what ruined the house you have two houses one built on a solid foundation and one built on sinking sand or on a faulty foundation which was destroyed and this one was solid it was solid according to the word because the person heard the word and they did the word. So why do we see things crumbling sometimes? Why do we see marriages shaking? Why do we see churches being shaken? Why do we see uh, uh, leaders being shaken? Why do we see members uh, 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 the body of Christ? Uh, all of these things being shaken. Our foundation can be shaken, but we won't be moved if we're hearing the word and doing the word. So those that are hearing the word and doing the word is still going through the same pandemic, still going through the same economic turn. Things are getting back right, but we still had to go through it. Shaken, but not moved. 
But those that have been moved in that house has been destroyed greatly is because they heard the word and didn't do the word or they didn't hear the word to do the word. So we see the difference there that we have to get through the testing. You test your faith. Watch this. In each stage of the process, you have a test. You have a test in the hearing stage, you have a test in the seeing stage, and you have a test in the doing stage. And I'm going to get into those next week so we can continue on because I don't want to get started in another point and, and have to go longer than we need to. So next week, we're going to talk about the test of your walk. In each stage, there is a test. A hearing test, a seeing test, and a doing test. So join me next week, and we're going to dive into that portion of it, continuing on from James, the second chapter, and we're going to see this out in the scripture. So you continue this week to walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. Hope this word blessed you. Allow the word to penetrate in your heart. You have a blessed week. Be blessed.